All right, I would say it's two after. Um, let's get started. Um, hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar, Kickstart Your Kubernetes Projects with Amazon AKSD and Cube One. Um, since we did not activate the waiting room, uh, you could also like uh, join our uh, super professional preparation. <laughs> uh, my name is Christine, I'm from Kubernetes and I'm really excited uh, to see so many joining. We are at yeah, almost 70 attendees, that is great. And I am also very glad to welcome our today's speakers. Um, first, Michael Hausenblas from AWS and Mario from Kubernetes. I do have some um, organizational remarks before we really get started. First of all, if you have questions during the presentation, just type them in the chat window and then we will answer them either straight away or in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Um, also, in case you need to drop out for whatever reason, we are recording this meeting and we will upload and share it at the beginning of next week. So uh, no worries about that. Or of course, if you would like want to like share it with your friends and family or whoever. Um, yeah, and that's already it. Um, I will now hand over to Michael. Uh, welcome again, and um, I hope you enjoy the webinar. All right. Thanks so much for the introduction. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, it's really uh, great that we found the time to, to do that together. Um, as you can see from the background, obviously, I'm I'm really in Ireland. I'm based out of Ireland. Um, this is, I think, Inish more, one of the, the islands uh, uh, that are just right uh, out, out here in the, in the Galway Bay. And so, as you can tell from my last name, this is an obvious original Irish name, Ohausenblas, uh, or not quite. I'm originally from Austria. Uh, so, theoretically, I also speak German, understand German. Um, and I work at AWS in the container service team. And um, in the context of our today's topic, I helped um, launching EKSD, the EKS distribution, um, end of last year around reInvent. And just as a, a quick reminder, let me quickly share. Um, let me see the window. Um, wherever that is, there you go. Can you see uh, my browser here? Yes. yes. <clears throat> cool. So that's the blog post, the launch blog post. We also did a containers from the couch session if you are more audiovisual and, and want to listen in, um, where we essentially explain the the place of, of the EKS distro, of EKS D in our overall offering. So the umbrella term uh, EKS um, and EKS D being this distro, this bare bone, you know, essentially just the bits, right? Um, if you think about it, um, you know, EKS D doesn't come with an installer. It's really just the bits that you need to run um, that you know, we maintain, that we patch and we share with you. Uh, have a look at that uh, blog post. You see it's a, a quite a vibrant ecosystem and um, you, know, you can learn more about uh, EKSD itself on, on that site, distro.eks.amazonaws.com if you're interested in. Um, and that's essentially our starting point, right? And because EKSD really is only the bits and nothing else, um, of course you could, you know, use COPS, for example, to, to provision it. But if you are uh, looking for uh, a great experience for something more convenient, for something that you can use in production based on EKSD, then um, you obviously want uh, to have what we are looking at today. Um, and with that, I'm handing over to Mario and I'll you know, um, keep an eye on the chat and uh, jump in with some unsolicited comments every now and then. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. So um, I'm Mario. I am not from Ireland. Uh, I'm from uh, Munich. Um, so 
in the middle of Germany. And I think we are now nearly the middle of Europe uh, as uh, Great Britain dropped out of the EU. <laughs> so um, I'm working for Kubernetes as a uh, Kubernetes consultant in the professional service team. And uh, I want you, I want to show you today how we use our um, open source uh, cluster lifecycle management tool cube one to get you started with uh, installing EKSD. So let me quickly share my screen for this. I hope you see my screen. All right. Yep. So, <clears throat> so um, quickly about me. Uh, I uh, work for Kubernetes, as already mentioned. Um, you can always drop me uh, some questions uh, at either GitHub or Twitter or write me an email. So uh, whenever you, you want to know more, uh, just drop me a note. And uh, let's get right into who are we? Basically, uh, we are Kubernetes. Um, we are a company that uh, is heavily engaged in the um, cloud, uh, cloud infrastructure. And uh, we are maintaining several open source projects inside of this uh, um, cloud infrastructure. And uh, we are the creators of Cube One which we will use today, and uh, of Kubematic, um, which is widely used inside of the EU already. Uh, we are one of the top employees for Kubernetes in uh, Europe, and uh, we are the top one of the top five committers to the Kubernetes project in the, in the past 12 months. Also, we are a full uh, remote company, which means we have a headquarter, which is located in Hamburg, but honestly, even I never been there. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, something on my to-do list to be there at least once. <laughs> um, also, we have uh, employees that are contributing to the Kubernetes dashboard and are heavily engaged in this part as well. So if you're interested in any, uh, in any more information of our company, uh, just head over to uh, kubematic.com to find out about us. So what is Cube1? Um, Cube1 is basically our open source uh, provider neutral um, cluster lifecycle manager for uh, Kubernetes clusters. Um, so you can upgrade uh, your Kubernetes clusters, uh, create them, unprovision them, uh, everything that uh, goes falls into the uh, cluster lifecycle um, that you need to do uh, with anything Kubernetes related. And uh, since uh, the beginning of this year, we also support EKSD. Um, so we help you um, using EKSD on your uh, in either on AWS or on your on-prem. Uh, system. For today, we will just have a look at uh, mm -hmm. deploying it on AWS. But uh, we have a small gift for you at the end of the uh, webinar, um, which I'm pretty happy uh, to give it to you. So uh, stay tuned till the end. What features do we have with Cube One? So um, first, uh, first and foremost, it's open source. So any one of you that is interested can basically contribute to it uh, and um, or open issues, uh, create feature requests, and um, actively uh, engage with our developers to uh, yeah just create another great product um, that everyone can use. Um, you have the full Kubernetes cluster lifecycle management inside of it. So you can install, upgrade, repair, and unprovision your whole cluster. Um, we support various um, operating systems, Ubuntu, CentOS, Flatcar. But on top of it, uh, we also support uh, Amazon Linux too. And uh, what is also a big plus is uh, we do a declarative cluster 
declaration. So um, you can basically reuse your configuration and uh, it's easy and uh, reproducible. Um, we support all of the upstream supported Kubernetes versions, as well as for EKSD, we uh, support every release that uh, is basically put out. And we are automating worker provisioning, uh, which is not yet a feature for EKSD, but it is on our roadmap. More features. <laughs> uh, we have a couple of more features. So it's uh, completely compatible with Kube Admin uh, because we're actually using it. Um, and uh, as you will see in a couple of minutes, um, we are using um, Ansible or Terraform uh, states to just uh, deploy your infrastructure and um, continue from there. Um, also, you can use other infrastructuring tools. Um, then you just have uh, to create uh, the configuration manually. Um, we have like the SSH jump post support, uh, which we will also use in this demo. And we also support, have the support for proxy environments, um, as well as that you can use it on basically every environment that you need. Why would I use Cube one for EKSD? Um, because we use the uh, latest technology um, that is available in uh, managing your Kubernetes clusters. And uh, we have a lot of features that basically makes it easy for you to, yeah, maintain, uh, to maintain your Kubernetes cluster because everyone that have looked uh, and tried to set up a Kubernetes cluster manually knows there are pains to do it. <laughs> and uh, I personally think we make it very easy with, with Cube1. Um, we have, uh, at the end, we will have an uh, ready to use cluster that you uh, just yeah, can start using. And um, as already mentioned, we are in, have the ability to integrate with in, uh, infrastructure provisioning tools like um, Terraform or Ansible. And we are supporting all of the EKSD versions that are released. So uh, you might be now interested in how can I get it? Um, it's an easy way. Uh, you can just uh, use our installation script, uh, which downloads the um, current version of uh, Cube One, and the current version that we are using is uh, 1.2.0, which was released today. So uh, we are using the new stuff. Um, you can alternatively uh, download one of our releases from GitHub or for the Arch Linux repositories, use Pacman and so on. Um, the documentation uh, you find uh, in our, um, on our documentation site. And uh, which is uh, also important, uh, I will share all of the code that we use today with you uh, in a repository so you can try it out by yourself. All right, let's start. So what do we want to do? Uh, first things first, we want to create our infrastructure. So we want to use Terraform to set up all the networking, create the instances, create the load balancer, create a firewall, and uh, set up a high availability AKS uh, D control plane. Uh, with one control plane node per availability zone and which is also load balanced. So this is our goal for today. So to have it in one more, uh, in a little bit of picture. So we basically create our control plane hosts, um, also a bastion host uh, where we use cube one to access all of the uh, control planes. Uh, recreate our load balancer and uh, which is placed in our VPC. And then you can basically uh, call the Cube APL uh, I um, load balancer endpoint and uh, access your Kubernetes cluster. For this, let's have a look at our source code for now. So um, to have the, um, the rights that we need in our account, 
we also created a small policy JSON that you can uh, refer to on which roles we need to basically uh, create the infrastructure. Um, is the font size big enough or do I have to zoom in a little bit? Maybe just a little, like one or two. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> All right, so um, basically, um, these are just uh, different uh, different rules that uh, we need to uh, apply in a policy um, for our account that we are using um, in uh, AWS to um, deploy our uh, machines. Uh, you can just uh, have a look at it in the repository afterwards. So there are no big no big deals in there. Uh, just uh, be sure that uh, this one here is the same as you name your cluster because otherwise <laughs> uh you would be having an issue uh, in the in the cluster so let's Mario, have a look uh, yeah if i may stop you here just yes. for for you know making sure that we're on the same page and everyone who is listening and, and looking at, at that as well so this is a uh, a manual process there right so you need to of course you can automate that part as well but you need to before you can do you can proceed with that you need to grab you need to create that and grab that and, and put it in here so there's yes so there you no basically or, or um, no this is basically you need to create an uh, a service account um, with this policy applied so that your uh, terraform provider basically can run the script and and uh, have all the rights to bring it up but also to tear it down. So this is something manual you have to do. It's basically providing access to, uh, to from your from your uh, PC to to uh, AWS. Yeah. So let's have a quick overview over uh, the files. So um, I installed Cube One. You can test if your Cube One is running. Let me zoom in a little bit by writing cube one and we s <laughs> and we see uh, I, I'm not able to write. So uh, basically we now see that uh, cube one is running there and um, you then also see like uh, which commands are available and uh, what to do and uh, where to use it. So, and I created a folder which is called TF uh, infra, which is just uh, containing our um, our Terraform files. Uh, we can have a short look inside of these Terraform files. So basically, we use the AWS provider um, that is uh, available from uh, from Terraform, and uh, we then just create the data sources uh, where we read our information for what is our VPC, uh, what are our availability zones, and so on and so on. We uh, set up our our network. We create our firewall, uh, create our firewall settings that we are able to talk to uh, the things that we are creating. Um, we are creating the uh, the load balancer there. Um, we are creating SSH keys. We are setting up IEM rules for for everything. And finally, we are creating our um, control plane uh, machines for. Uh, our cluster, and uh, then we are creating static workers here. Um, why are we creating static workers? Uh, the current version of Cube One, or better, better saying, of our meshing controller uh, that usually automates the creation of workers, is not yet uh, supporting uh, Amazon Amazon Linux. So uh, yeah, there you have to to wait for the next release um, uh, where we are work uh, we are currently working on this so basically um, as soon as it is part in our machine controller um, you can automatically create workers and don't have to take care of it uh, manually anymore and uh, in the end we create our bastion host where we uh, connect this and you're now probably wondering huh, i'm not sure how to write all these things and this is a lot. Um, we got you covered for uh, almost every environment that you can uh, that you can imagine. So uh, when you're in our repository, we always have um, 
examples for Terraform for all uh, the environments like uh, AWS, um, where we see what do I need to put in, what can I, uh, what what options are there, and uh, so this is just like use our our demo configs, work a little bit on them, and try playing around. So um, you can basically start with them also for if you use vSphere on your um, on your local environment. So we got you covered. <laughs> All right. So the next thing that uh, we are going to do is basically to, uh, if you want to start with Terraform, you just uh, say inside of the folder, Terraform init which basically downloads all of the um, the providers that you need uh, to run this installation. Obviously, I already downloaded it, so we don't have to wait uh, that, that much. And then we can do a Terraform plan. And with Terraform plan, Terraform basically tells us what he's going or what it's going to do um, for uh, installing uh, all the machines. <laughs> uh, and one thing that I already almost forgot is, oh, there are no credentials. Yeah, sure. Well, how would we know that uh, we we use uh, AWS and uh, how we know that our uh, AWS account is used? But I already got you covered. So I created a credentials file where you, um, when you, whenever you create an account. Um, and yes, I will now show you my credentials because I created them like yesterday and I will probably delete them after the demo. So <laughs> good luck using them. So basically you just need a file where you set the environment variables for the AWS access key uh, that you create as soon as uh, what we talked before. Um, when you create the, um, the service account, you can always get an uh, access key ID and a secret to it. And this we just set into environment variables. So Terraform then will just use them. And because I'm also lazy, uh, we want to connect to the machines somehow. So we need some kind of uh, yeah, access key, uh, uh, SSH key. So uh, I just created an uh, SSH key um, to put be put onto the machines. And um, so that all of this is accessible. Uh, you can then use this load credentials file, um, which will just uh, set all of the credentials to your current shell. So uh, what we will do now is we will go one folder up and we'll say source load credentials. And uh, when we now check our credentials, we can we will see like, uh, I already forgot how the credentials is named. Uh, so if we access it, we now see that it's it's available and we can now go back to the Terraform uh, folder and can say, all right, Terraform plan. And now pray to the demo gods, everything will work. <laughs> and yeah, everything uh, will work. So basically what it does now, it, it tells you here what it will actually do. So um, we now see, OK, uh, we will create um, a machine which is uh, which has the name EKSD Cube 1 EU West uh, and the zone. And uh, it will cr uh, create a machine there uh, in the availability zone uh, Europe West 3B. Um, it will have the instance type uh, T3 medium and so on. And it will have the public key uh, for our that we uh, for our private key that we uh, created previously. So uh, everything looks fine. It al also tells you what what it will be, uh, add to the to the system. And now we just can say Terraform apply. And uh, if we hit apply, and wait a little bit. It will all again tell you what it will do. And then you have to say, yeah, I really, really, really want to do it. And then we can say, go. 
And what it's now doing, it's it's now creating all of the machines, all of the policies. And um, there's actually no difference if you do it on AWS or if you do it on your uh, on your vSphere or uh, wherever you use Terraform, because it's the only thing that is changing is basically the provider that you use and for creating the machines. I mean, obviously, when you use it on AWS, it's much more easier because you don't have to take care of creating load balancers and creating a load balancer machine and uh, stuff like this. Uh, but this is also possible. And in all our examples, we also cover things like using a load balancer or creating a virtual LP for uh, creating a load balancer and stuff like this. So if you have a look in our Terraform examples, this was fast. I was I'm not on yeah. that point while, while you're debugging why oh, it was so fast. <laughs> um, or maybe that, that was the plan. It um, was just fast. <laughs> if you think about it, right, if you are using an EKSD-based setup on AWS, then the question obviously is why not directly using EKS, right, the managed service? Um, so I would argue that very likely um, you want that, although you've shown it now in AWS, which is awesome, um, in, in, in other setups, right? Where you are, um, you know, you're owning the entire um, compute infrastructure, you, know, you mentioned VMware or you know, on-premises somewhere, um, where, yeah, where, where it's, you know, where you don't have the, necessarily the the opportunity to outsource this uh, this heavy lifting to you know manage the the control plane and do patches there upgrades etc cetera, etc cetera. where as I said in the context of AWS you probably want to go with EKS the, the managed service directly then just yeah. a thought yeah I mean uh, um, I, we just use it uh, for convenience here uh, because it's uh, uh, I, I didn't have a vSphere cluster on my hand. <laughs> um, so, uh, but what everything that, that you basically can do and can use is, um, it is you can use it wherever you want. You're, so you're not locked on your location. And I think this is the, this is the, the, the biggest advantage. So, um, for example, if you, if you just want to try it out and uh, say, uh, yeah, I just want to try if it uh, if I can run it on EC2 machines in in AWS and just tear it down for testing purpose. It's in yeah, it's like you saw it. It was like if you download the uh, the code and you gave uh, the gave in the the uh, the variables, you have it running in 15 minutes or even less if you are not as as slow as I am. <laughs> All right, so. Now that we are on this point, um, let's go back to our slides a little bit so that I can show you one more thing um, for our installation process. So we now have created uh, the, inf uh, the instances and uh, the uh, infrastructure that we, we needed. Uh, with the with the Terraform scripts, and uh, yes, I used the scripts of the example. So if you do a, a git diff, you will see there are there are, there are no changes in it. Um, what we now have to do is um, cube one needs needs a little bit of a config file. Um, the good thing is the bulk of the config is already taken care of because we use the Terraform state. So you don't have to put everything that you put in into Terraform uh again into the configuration because we are just using the terraform state and um so but we now need to say okay we want this version of of kubernetes we want uh, this version of uh EK or this aksd version of kubernetes and um there is some manual work we need to do also you can define things like Oh, I want to use container D as a runtime, or I want to use Docker as a runtime. Um, so uh, you have like uh, some options to uh, just configure more stuff. And uh, we got also all available config options, uh, which you will see will be a lot. So uh, there's a cube one config print command, and you just also can out, uh, out it into a file so that you have a create a, a file that you just can fill in with your 
all the details that you need. And then we just need to run kube install and enjoy our uh, ready to use cluster. All right, so one more step there. So we have now provisioned the infrastructure and we will now create our kube config manifest. So because obviously uh, we are only on, on short time, I created it. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't look that scary, right? Uh, so we are having now the uh, only a couple of options that we uh, basically need. So we create a cube one cluster and then we choose the uh, version for Kubernetes that we want to use, which is in this case, the uh, 19.6 EKS 1.19.1, which is as far as I know the current one, because you can always go to distro.eks.amazonaws.com. And when you scroll down there, down, you see, um, the release dependencies. And when you click there, you see all of the packages uh, that are in the dependencies that you need. So uh, one dot, uh, Kubernetes 1.19 uh, with this release uh, just tells you what you need. And also uh, we need to get, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, you just have to use our asset configuration for this. Um, this is the case because we uh, need to tell our system all of the um, all of the, the parts that uh, we are where we will we'll get all of the binaries. Um, I will add comments to this so that you can easily find on this page uh, which link uh, or where, which string you have to search for to get um, all the information you need and put in the, the correct version uh, that you want to use. For example, uh, how do I get the tag of the current uh, Kube API server image? So you can just search for Kube API server container image and then just put in, in into um, your config file the necessary information. And so um, as I already did this, we can now basically run our uh, our installation. What is important is um, currently we are using AWS. So we need to say uh, the cloud provider that we want to use is AWS. Uh, the good thing is you don't need any more information beside this because um, Cube One is also using um, your environment variables. So you find in the uh, in our documentation which environment variables you have to set, but spoiler alert, it's these. <laughs> so uh, once we set you set this, which we already did, we can just use everything uh, from there. Uh, so um, also you can we, define which, yeah. Shall we, given that we have, I think another 15 to 20 minutes, uh, that we also address that we have time to address the Q&A there. I currently see four questions there. Sure. Just to make sure. like. Uh, if you have some no more, that's great. Just making sure. Um, so where it started, uh, recording was already answered. So the, the first one is from Marco. I, I can see what CNI provider is used. Can we force it to be Mac VLAN? That's the first. A ah, entry yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, I honestly, we are using, this is a good question. Um, which I cannot answer right away, I must admit. Maybe park that one um, for for later and, and have a look at the next one for yes. now. Uh, yeah. 
Harshvardhan, can we use spot instances for worker nodes? Yes, you can uh, basically. Uh, uh, so um, you can use whatever machines um, they are available on uh, on AWS. So uh, you can basically use uh, whatever whatever you want uh, to. Um, in the uh, you can even use machines that are already there. As you can, uh, as you can also create like uh, data attributes with Terraform, which will just read the information and um, populate everything. So um, yeah, it's totally possible. Um, Jürgen, what if the Kubernetes version is constrained by the provider? Uh, for example, Azure AKS has fixed sets. Do I have to know this beforehand, or does Cube One do some querying? So essentially, so you want to match with the underlying um, Kubernetes version, right? Yeah, so um, if you use uh, in the AK, uh, in the uh, EKS uh, example, um, you are basically bound to the versions um, that are available for uh, EKSD. So which is currently nine uh, 1.18.1 or 6. Uh, one, yeah, and uh, 1.19.6. So basically, uh, you're the constraint in this case. If you don't use uh, AKSD, which is not part of the topic today, uh, you're not constrained to anything because um, you're downloading it for, uh, you're just using the Kubernetes version that you want to use and it's downloading it. So uh, because then you only use the um, the machine that is available. Uh, the, you, you just use the machines. So it's like a v Linux VM running anywhere. So it doesn't care what, what Kubernetes it's using. Uh, Praveen asks, can we use Active Directory or I suppose any kind of LDAP really to authenticate users of an application that is deployed in Kubernetes clusters? I have to be honest, I don't entirely see how that is restricted to, to this case, but I, I suppose it's like in actually, general. Actually, um, this is uh, basically this is something that we do with Kubernetes, which is our um, which is our uh, other open source project. So um, there you can have when you uh, this is a, pr uh, a platform where you um, multi uh, manage multi multiple clusters, and uh, there you can uh, use any any Active Directory or uh, or LDAP to uh, use it as an authentication and to give various rights for creating clusters, uh, using clusters, um, using managing whole projects or so managing a bunch of clusters. Um, but uh, it's not part for Cube One because Cube One is basically only for, I want to create or upgrade th um, the cluster. So this is more like, yeah, as I, I mentioned, a lifecycle management tool. Um, but uh, if you're interested in um, yeah, restraining uh, parts, uh, I definitely would have a look in Kube, uh, Kubematic. So essentially Kubematic being kind of like a fleet manager where you can create different clusters. And one of those clusters could be what you've just demonstrated today with, with Kube1. Exactly. And, yeah. But you would do the actual um, integration there, the, the actual permission management, et cetera, uh, you would yeah. do on the, on the Kubematic level for across different yeah. clusters. So you would use uh, Cube One to create your uh, master cluster, and everything else is then cre uh, created and managed by uh, Kubematic. Uh, uh, and um, there you can use the the access management basically. Yeah. Very cool, uh, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous attendee uh, <laughs> asks. Apparently, it is not necessary to create the terraform.tf vars file. Um, uh, actually, if you have a variables file, um, you can have like the default variables uh, in there. So uh, I used uh, a bunch of diff uh, um, of default uh, settings like uh, EU vest, um, the, the machine size, but um, you can always use a Terraform TVAS file to override specific settings. Um, you're correct. I forgot to, to mention it uh, especially. So um, here I just named it uh, how I name my cluster. 
how many static workers I want to provision because as I mentioned, uh, we are not yet able to uh, provision dynamic workers. Um, so this will be uh, then the case when, uh, as soon as we updated the machine uh, controller um, to support Amazon Linux 2, um, you then all also can use uh, dynamic workers so you don't have to create the uh, static workers manually. And uh, here I just gave in the path to our uh, public key file. I, I think def by default, it would just go to your home directory and use the, the public key of your, of your uh, home directory. And um, yeah, this is um, just small adjustments. But overall, you basically can skip a Terraform TVAS file if you have everything in the variables TF. Uh, Jakim Freitas asks, uh, with Cube One, we need to create load balancer services for the workers separately. And just to give you a little bit of, of uh, background, the or the, the context, the the question or the answer really depends on on the environment, right? If you yeah. provision something, so I I'm not going to preempt Mario's answer. What the concrete answer is, just saying, if you, for example. Um, using something on premises where there is per se no load balancer, you might you know use MATLAB or other uh, you know load balancers that you provide that yourself. Um, then that's one option. If you're running in in AWS, you have a, a number of options for load balancer, ALB, NLP, um, that come with various supports for for integration uh, on, on the Kubernetes side. Um, so it really depends on the on the environment per se in general and. No, yeah, uh, basically, uh, basically, that's also that that's that's the complete answer because um, uh, nobody will, nobody wants to to force you to use any uh, any load balancer or uh, a specific load balancer. So um, for uh, our for example, for our vSphere example, um, we use uh, Keep Alive D with a virtual a virtual IP. Um, that is just on the uh, control plane nodes. So the control plane nodes are basically working as a load, bal load balancer pool. <laughs> and um, on the uh, uh, when you use the, um, in our example, we just use the uh, AWS uh, load balancers for because it's convenient, so you don't have to configure it. But I mean, you still can go there and set up your 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 own load balancer. But you don't need to create the services for it. Yeah. Okay. And now, unfortunately, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. We we have another one, and, and then we really get to the CNI provider. I think we still have time for for that. Uh, John Kennedy asks, "Do you know of any production Cube One Plus EKSD deployments on OpenStack? Are people already doing this in the wild?" Uh. Maybe which part you know. open stack or like what 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 part in the wild? You're you're specifically, I, I guess, John. You're specifically interested in uh, OpenStack as the um, you know provider for for the machines and, and networking. Yeah. So, so um, as I know that uh, we did not support OpenStack uh, yet. We know that uh, no one is using EKSD uh, in, in uh, uh, EKSD in production on OpenStack <laughs> um, because uh, we uh, with 1.2.0 uh, uh, of Cube One um, we start we rolled out the uh, ability to even use EKSD and uh, yeah. So uh, it's all rather new, and I think the release of EKSD was in December, right? Or November, December, December it was. Yeah. Yes, yes, we launched it uh, for around reInvent. So that blog post, I think, was beginning of December, and uh, yeah, so it's yeah. still relatively new. Um, for yeah, yeah, easy one. Is there an example cool. of deploy EKSD on already provisioned VMs instead of provisioning them with Terraform? Yes, uh, you can. Um, in our documentation, you can use uh, the example for bare metal, where you just have uh, to en uh, enter in the 
uh, cube one uh, config file, all of the informations, uh, how cube one uh, is getting onto the machine. Um, HA for the control plane nodes. That's an excellent question. That's certainly something I'm pretty sure uh, Mandu we, Kovara. We are. We are highly availability on the control plane nodes because uh, as we stated in the beginning, I can bring up my 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 presentation again because we saw it there. Um, this is highly availability uh, highly availability set up because um, each of the control planes is in another availability zone. So um, this pre uh, pretty much uh, makes it into a highly availability cluster. Oh, uh, Alexandro Erseni, how do you manage Kate's updates, especially updates that need draining of nodes? Um, you can basically uh, do uh, updates with uh, Cube One, and um, it is creating then. Um, uh, it is updating one machine, and as soon as uh, the one machine is uh, back and running, it puts it back into the cluster, and uh, the cluster is basically reconciling, and then it's taking the next one and taking the next one and so on. So basically, you, you do a one-by-one one update. Cool. Um, Rias, Shaik. Uh, asks when AC1 is crashed, what about access to cube one? So when a, I would say that yeah, okay. specific. Or, so, um, so it's crashed. Basically, um, you, uh, if AC1 is, uh, one is crashed, um, you still have, uh, you still have access to your cluster because uh, the cube, a, uh, the Kubernetes API is exposed by the load balancer and it would use a AC2 and AC3. Um, if you need to do while AC1 is crashed uh, some um, setup uh, or some upgrade of your Kubernetes cluster, which probably is not that often a good idea, <laughs> um, you uh, could always uh, deploy another Bastion host in AC2 and AC3. I mean, you can even uh, create like a Bastion host in AC1, AC2, AC3 and put it behind a load balancer and then access your bastion host via low balancer. So this is no no problem at all. Uh, OK, and last but not least, we're coming back to the CNI provider. <laughs> um, yeah. And <laughs> I the, the CNI plugin um, it breaks down into, into two things, right? I mean, the CNI plugin per se, the question regarding like, are you using, I don't know, Calico or Cilium or whatever? I think whatever. we use Calico, but honestly, I'm not sure. I need to take this question and we need to answer this question uh, under the recording or you drop us an email and uh, uh, basically we can we can answer this uh, off stream. Okay or... with you, Mark? Thanks, Maria. That makes sense. That, that okay with you, Marco? We follow up. Oh. Well. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other questions? Great questions, by the way. That's really, it's really awesome. Um, and and great, uh, great show rate. Um, I really appreciate that. And, and you know, Mario, thanks a lot for putting, um, you know, walking us through that, putting that together. I think it it really demonstrates what what an awesome job you folks did. Um, Taking EKSD and and you know making it really uh, very very convenient and very easy to use, and I would definitely um, look forward to seeing that in combination with Kubernetes to you know uh, address this this you know uh, having having a fleet of of clusters uh, running maybe for some future. Um, uh, yeah, and we can we can definitely do this, and uh, I mean we only created the machines now and. Uh, so we are still missing an important part. <laughs> so um, because I'm a lazy person, I'm a really lazy person. Um, I created this make file for you, which uh, basically you can 
just run the whole installation with this with this with this make file and don't have to, uh, only have to to put in the correct paths um, because we are missing one more thing. Uh, we have to basically install our cluster there. So we just say uh, make k1 apply or uh, in our usual setup we use uh, cube one apply and then we say uh, manifest as a parameter where we put in our cube one yaml file and um, also the terraform output file but uh, you know as a lazy person i already created this as a, a make file so we can just you can just use this uh, this make file um, Honestly, it, it wasn't even created by me. It was created by a colleague of me, but <laughs> just reuse stuff that works. Um, so what it's now doing, it's it's basically downloading the packages um, that uh, we need, installing it on the machine. So it's uh, installing EKST onto the machines uh, of your cluster, uh, um, installing everything. And in the end, it downloads the cube config. And you have then the cube config for your cluster that you can use to add, uh, to access your cluster. And you don't have to do anything at all because everything is done automatically. So uh, yeah, while this is running, we don't have two... While, while we are waiting for that, um, yeah. I think first was Venu Gopal. How about service mesh Istio or anything uh, out of the box? Um, we don't have it out of the box. Um, what uh, then I would refer again to uh, Kubematic. So when you have like a multi-cluster management and you need to have like an installation for uh, many Istio uh, or Istio on many instances uh, on many clusters, um, we have the add-on um, option. So you can create add-ons for Kubematic that as as soon as you create a user cluster, you can say, oh, in this user cluster, I want a Metal LB, uh, an, an Engine X, or I want uh, Istio. So basically, when you create a new cluster, um, Istio gets already installed onto your cluster and with your basic configuration. And you can even, um, you can even uh, create uh, this add-on with config files so that can put in a default config or change the config that you want on your user cluster to have. Awesome. Um, Mamdu asks, are you including any logging tools in Kate's cluster build like Elastic Stack after building the cluster? Um, this is also a part that we do in uh, Kubematic. So uh, when you when you run Kubematic, you um, all um, you have uh, Prometheus running, and um, you can uh, all of the basic metrics are created um, for for each cluster and for your for your master cluster. So you basically can use this to. To, uh, to monitor. So this is also a topic that we cover with uh, with Kubematic because we wanted to have Cube One as slim as possible um, yes. to just have the life cycle management of of uh, I, think, I think you really made a great point now, Maria, that we really need to come back together and see Kubematic in in action with that. So, <laughs> uh, another or maybe the same anonymous attendee asks: You could trigger make a command from local exec feature of Terraform. That's probably more like a comment than a question, I guess. Um, and given the time, I'm going to move forward to Yami Ritchie, Aurelian Yonku. I'm trying my best to pronounce it properly. Uh, I applied this procedure to do deployment on vSphere, but despite the fact that the user creates full admin rights, I'm still facing an error like error cloning virtual machine server fault code permission to perform this operation was denied. Oh yeah, this is this is uh, actually something that I run into like two weeks ago. Um, basically, um, you have um, you have the issue um, that uh, you probably created a template uh, of your of your machine that you want uh, that you want to use. Uh, so you have an OVA um, inside of your vSphere, and uh, your account needs to have the right to read. This um, this OVA and use it as a template. And being admin or uh, being admin in like a DC does not necessarily mean that you have to, uh, that you have the right to read the um, 
uh, the, the the image. So this is a complete uh, completely only issue with uh, the rights management. Also, if you have in the same namespace the uh, template with the same name, um, also it's in, in different folders. This also can cause an issue because uh, it's only using uh, like the find command that you can use with the govc shell um, so it does not uh, it then got too many uh, too many um, yeah parameters because it found for example two and then it also cannot create the the machine which is all, uh, telling you a strange error sometimes so uh, just to make sure that your your account have the rights to read uh, these templates and uh yeah and does it have to the rights to uh also read the network configuration of this vms this also could be an error so uh just have a look uh, at at your rights again this this should fix the problem cool. all right uh shall we slowly but surely wrap up yes sure. so we are installing currently the machine controller and I will just uh, go back to my slides. Well, hopefully this is done. Uh, and we will skip some of them. Uh, we will straight go to our bonus round. So as I mentioned, we released kube 1.1.2.0 1 today, uh, which is now supporting Amazon Linux 2 in alpha. Um, so uh, you can now use Amazon Linux 2 machines and use EKSD uh, in your uh, local environment. For example, on vSphere, um, we, I just pointed it out. This feature is alpha, so uh, don't use it in production yet. I mean, you can, but. You're not. You're only <laughs> yeah, uh, but we are, we are very happy to announce this. And uh, on our to-do list is the implementation of Amazon Linux 2 for our machine controller that you can automatically uh, deploy workers and have the reconciling with uh, uh, with the workers as well uh, with uh, Amazon Linux 2. So uh, a new Linux basically underlying your, um, your system. Also, we got uh, some links for you uh where you can find cube one um where you can find the release infos for the um eks uh, distro um the code of the demo uh, will be up uh later this evening uh inside of this repository there you can also find some examples for how to install uh on vsphere uh in a practical example um and all of the information about the Amazon AKS distribution uh, uh, distro. And uh, also you can join us in our Kubernetes uh, Slack channel uh, in our Cube One channel if you have any more questions. And I, I see oh, a question, but I, I don't understand it. And that is, is the machine controller a CRD? Uh, a controller is a controller, a CRD is a CRD. I'm not entirely sure as from what, what exactly you mean with machine controller CRD. So we yeah, use CRDs to create the setup, basically, yeah. Right, just uh, the question, but... is the machine controller CRD? I, 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 I also <laughs> don't don't get it quite. But uh, to, to make uh, a, a, everything in the end, so we say export uh, cube config is um eksd cube one minus cube config and now we can say cube control get notes or you could type cube cuddle delete namespace <laughs> cube dev this time just to see how it works <laughs> and now you see we have our, our, our master nodes and we have our three workers and you see the uptime of the machines and the version that we are running. So uh, beside of talking in less than an hour, you created your own running cluster of EKSD. I mean, if you're fast, you can probably do it in 10 minutes. If you, if you don't have a Michael around who, who constantly sidetracks you and, and distracts <laughs> you, then you can do it in less than 30 minutes. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was really awesome. Uh, yeah, 
Um, I think we are at the end of the session. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> we are like, yeah, one minute delayed. Uh, this was a very engaged discussion. Uh, thanks uh, to all for joining and also thanks for Mario. Now I think you really have deserved your German uh, Feierabend <laughs> after <laughs> like, um, yeah, um, answering everything. Uh, I only wanted to quickly promote our next events. Uh, they are all free uh, for participation. It's the Enterprise Cloud Native Summit on April 13 and Container Days on July 6 to 8. And for Container Days, we are also still looking for speakers. So the CFP is open. You can find all our events on our website. Of course, if you have questions left uh, that did not get answered today, um, we are always open to discussion. You can find us on Twitter, GitHub. Um, we do have a forum. So there are many, many different ways to reach out. Um, so please uh, feel free to do that. If you have questions regarding um, the, the events or the webinars or whatever, um, you can reach me under christine at kubernetes.com. And with that, I want to end today's session. Once again, thanks to Michael and Mario for speaking. Thanks to you all. Oh. Oh, we are out. Bye. Zoom automatically ends three minutes after. <laughs> <laughs> or it's good to be recording and participants are here, oh. at least oh. as far as I can. Oh, what I happened? Can see chair, Mario, so. okay, okay, they no. still can see us. They, okay. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but we were at the end anyways. Uh, yeah, thanks again. Um, yeah, have a nice day, evening, um, or yeah, depending on where you are. And hopefully uh, we'll see you at one of our upcoming webinars or uh, container days or on GitHub um, contrib contributing to our projects. Um, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Have a good one. Bye now. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good night. Bye.